Can we please put our hands together and give a huge round of applause for John Hunt. I'm going to be talking about my career as a graphic designer. Um, do we have any graphic designers here? What sort of design and stuff do you do? Publishing books, educational books. Maybe. Right, okay, okay. My experience is a bit different to yours. Um, I was inspired to become uh, an artist and a designer when I heard a radio play many, many years ago about Van Gogh. I was due to leave school at 15, that was the leaving age in my era, in a few months. And um, I didn't know what I'd be doing. But having listened to Van Gogh, I thought, well, that's for me, because I love drawing. It's easy. There's no maths. There's no spelling. Um, so I uh, announced this to my mother with great surprise. But you can't earn any money being an artist. She was so wrong. But. So I got to art college and slide. That's it, that's it, that's it. So I lived in Bristol at the time and this um, picture is the um, art school, it's, in fact it's the Royal West of England Royal Academy of Art in Bristol. This is in Queen's Road, Bristol. So I got an interview at the college. I was interviewed by the vice principal and um, the head of graphics. I take, they asked me to bring a portfolio of my work. So I spent several weeks hashing out some stuff. No. Like this, for example. Um, very amateurish. Um, but I told them, and this is true, I told them I'd done all this work in my spare time. But that really impressed them. Then they showed me the work the students were doing, which was vastly different to this. Um, so um, they seemed pleased with the fact that I did all this work by myself, not in the school. So I left the interview feeling, well, not quite sure whether I'd get a place or not. But in a few weeks, uh, I had a letter and they offered me a place to do a two-year course uh, on graphic design. It wasn't called graphic design in those days, it was commercial art, I think, yeah, was the term. So two years, and the syllabus was Lots of drawing, illustration, lettering, uh, and so forth. And in the second, that was the first year, in the second year, we had something called life drawing. Now, that was a bit puzzling. So we turn up for the life drawing class, and there were lots of students there, and there was a young lady in the far corner in a dressing gown. So, what's going to happen next? Well, the tutor comes and have a few, few words with her and she takes her dressing gown off and she's naked. <laughs> and uh, that was quite a shock. Quite a shock. <laughs> so that was the beginning of life drawing. Um, but then I had the problem of telling my mother I'd spent an afternoon <laughs> looking at a naked lady. <laughs> I didn't tell her. <laughs> oh, I forgot to show you some... You've seen that, sorry. Um, yeah. Oh, now, some of the uh, things we did at, um, on the course. Um, we did all sorts of... Um, objects we had to paint and draw from a collection they had in this studio, a collection of anything. Tins, bottles as you can see, wristwatches, 
Um, oh, and there's my, there's one of my life drawings. Right. So uh, the, the course finishes. The course finishes, and then I have to find a, a job. Now, fortunately, in Bristol there are lots of printers who need designers, and there are two very large, there were two very large printing companies who specialised in packaging. One of them was the subsidiary of Will's Tobacco, who were based in Bristol, and the other was a firm called ESNA Robinsons, and they printed all sorts of packaging. Um, if you go into a supermarket today, there's all this packaging on the shelves, and with the graphics that has to be designed by a designer. You know, it ranges from bags of flour, bags of sugar, tins with labels on, packets, cartons, all that, all those designs and prints, all done by graphic designers. These days it's with the computer, I guess, most of it. So there's plenty of scope. So I went for an interview, took my folder, um, and uh, left. I didn't get much reaction. Waited a few weeks, had not heard anything, so I phoned them up. And I think they said, yeah, we can give you an apprenticeship and you can come back and collect your work um, whenever you like. So, off I go on my first day into this studio with about 30 other artists and it's very much like the situation here loads of people and no sound <laughs> no one was chatting um, it was deathly, it was Dickensian and um, I thought well this is completely different to um, our college <laughs> uh, so it's a bit scary um, and the management, there was a studio manager and he had two sidekicks. What on earth they did all day long, I don't know, except um, complain that we were taking too long to do sketches continuously. And they managed to create an awful atmosphere. Um, it was really quite dreadful, I think, anyway. But I stuck it for quite a long time. And then um, I thought, well, I was getting out of this situation. Um, it's not doing me any good at all, no favours. So I looked around and there was a magazine which came out monthly, I think. It was the Advertisers Weekly. And they had jobs in there for not just artists and designers, but for agency people, um, you know, copywriters and all that sort of thing. And there was a job uh, advertised in London or near London, Woodford Green uh, and there was a sweet company called Trebal do you all, hence extra strong because they made extra strong moves <coughs> so I applied and I got an interview very good I thought but they were in London and I was in Bristol the interview was a uh, uh, first interview was in early December, so I hop in my minivan and uh, set off bright and early. It's a lovely sunny day, ten miles up the uh, there were no motorways. Ten miles up the road, it started snowing, and it was snowing and snowing and snowing, and the difficult the, the journey was getting more and more difficult. But I got there, I started at 8, and I got there about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> anyway, and they were all going home, but they did stay, and but the chap that was running the studio at the time stayed behind and gave me an interview. We seemed to click, which was rather good, because he had a similar background to myself. Um, so I went home feeding, quite buoyant. And lo and behold, I got later on another letter asking me to come for a second interview, which I did. Uh, and this time it was a nice bright sunny day. Uh, and they offered me a job, which I immediately accepted. 
So then we have the problem of selling our house in Bristol, or just outside of Bristol, and locating in somewhere near Woodford Green. Well, luckily, my in-laws lived in uh, Braintree in Essex. So we put the house on the market, um, and we quickly sold it. Uh, we hadn't found anywhere to live, so we went to live with Julia's parents in Braintree. So I was commuting from a brain tree into uh, Woodford Green in my little mini van, so very, very, it was okay, it was fine, fine. We eventually found a house um, in just outside of Epping, which was uh, quite a reasonable different uh, distance from um, Woodford Green. And um, we got a moving date. Now, this is where it becomes very dramatic. Two weeks before we moved into our new house, there were floods in Bristol where our furniture was stored right by the river. So, our furniture got wrecked, plus my portfolio. Oh dear, and um, we were well insured by us and by the, the uh, furniture people. But they had to move all this uh, soaking wet, sodden furniture to our new house just outside of Epic. Um, and um, because it would be assessed, and it was assessed, and we did very well out of it. But we didn't have much furniture left to use. We had a garage full of sodden um, furniture with the veneers coming off lost all my portfolio, and um, so forth. We were well insured, so there was no problem there. Um, so that was a bit, a bit of a shock all round. Um, anyway, moving into Trebor, brilliant job, totally different to the job I came from. They were friendly, they were encouraging, they were appreciative. And I started off, I, oh, I forgot to do this. <laughs> right. Oh, these are some of the designs I, I did while I was with this printers in Bristol. Um, they're the prints. Oh, that's the tree ball um, company that I joined in uh, 1968. Right, so tree ball was a, uh, Totally different atmosphere. Really, really friendly, really encouraging, very pleasant. And sweets to eat all day. We were encouraged to eat sweets. We were, yeah. Run, one Christmas, or just before Christmas, um, they made chocolate coated, plain chocolate coated Brazil nuts. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. When it comes to the orders, the staff have eaten, eaten all the stocks. <laughs> <laughs> really? They <Yeah. laughs> Anyway, you, we were encouraged to eat sweets. So, um, let's see where we are here. So, so, um, so Trebor was um, founded in uh, 1907 in London, um, in an area called um, Forest Gate. That's where Epping Forest begins, going north from there. Small uh, three three blokes, um, Robinson, Mr. Robinson, Mr. Woodcock, and Sydney Marks formed this company. Started making boiled sweets, and they were extremely successful. Right, let's see what we got here. Treble Mints was their star brand. They made it all sorts of mints: butter mints, soft mints, imperial mints. There's the button. There's the button. That's their factory they built in Forest Gate in about the 1930s. They went on to build factories in Chesterfield, Colchester, Woodford Green, and they were very successful. But as time went by, um, boiled sweets weren't quite so popular. Chocolate was coming in and people like Mars 
and Roundtree, Roundtree with Kit Kat, they were bringing in, Kit Kat was bringing in a hundred million pounds worth of sales each year just from the Kit Kat bar. Likewise, so were Mars. And that was, those figures are from a few years ago. Right. Here are some slides of another popular lime tree ball main, refreshers. You may have eaten them in your youth. Here's another range of um, sweets from the 1940s. These are, I got them, I think I did have some uh, samples of that. I do have some samples of my work uh, and packets. So you were there if you came to look a bit harder to the show. We did lots of packs for for Easter eggs, which were made by sharks. Um, Treeball bought sharks in the 1960s, and that was a great asset because they had a better image, as far as the public was concerned, as to the quality of their sweets. Um, whereas Treeball was a bit down market. Um, here's the, the um, Sharps, um, so creamy nut, this character is called. And they, they used him for many years and they made delicious toffee. Here are some of the packs from the 1950s. I've got, I've got some over there. These are just some overwraps from some boxes of chocolates. Now, um, this, uh, this is some roughs, what we call roughs done in mar marker pens for um, data sheets for the, uh, for the shopkeepers and for the salesmen. And these are all done by me. Now, this Swiss kit bar we bought out in the 70s um, was the first bar on the market of its kind. It wasn't a cereal bar, it was much richer. Um, it contained nuts, dried fruit, all that sort of thing, coated, uh, coated in a delicious plain chocolate, and it sold very well. Initially, all these bars were made by hand because there was no machinery, or we hadn't discovered any, but eventually we our R&D department found a machine that would make these bars. And the sh machine was used for making chipboard, would you believe? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was expensive to make and sales weren't sufficient, which is very sad really because it was a really good product. So it came off the market. The company as a whole was supported by their mints, extra strong mints. Sales were in the region of um, 20 million pounds a year. And that's going back to the 80s. <coughs> this is um, just one or two Easter egg packs there. That's my young daughter on the right there. Oh, that's, um, that is a rough, what we call a rough uh, design I did for the label. That is done with um, gouache paints. Do you, are you familiar with gouache? It's a very refined paint and you can use it either as a solid um, material or you can water it down and use it like a watercolour. Butter snap was another favourite from Sharps. It was very sickly. It was a toffee bar coated in chocolate. It sold very well for quite a few years. That's just a rough of an on pack promotion. Then we did, oh, Trigal did every kind of sweet imaginable. Um, you know, lollipops, toffees, all sorts of boiled sweets. They made that um, awful sort of chocolate, but not chocolate. 
it was called NCD, non-code code butter um, material, and main, mainly for children's sweets, like assorted tools and that sort of thing, and fish and chips. Most of these names we've thought up in the studio. We were not just doing the design, we were um, coming up with um, concepts like uh, Dotties. We did one year Dotties, which was a wrapper with a dot to dot puzzle on the inside on a roll of kids' sweets. So. Now, Regal Crown was a, um, uh, a brand we developed for the American market in the 50s and 60s, and it became the sixth largest selling candy in the United States. And it was just boiled sweets. They were rather an acid flavor. They were called fruit sours, I think. Um, and that went on for a few years. So, and because of the massive sales, they got the first Queen's Award for Industry in the 1960s. Uh, there's the bag of their cherry drops. Ah, here we have the superb um, extra strong mints. Oh, that says tree ball, but originally that was the Sharps version. Sharps had an extra strong mint, and tree ball had an extra strong mint. Um, that's most confusing, isn't it? But they did. <laughs> uh, but nowadays, these days, because we were taken over by cameras, um, the Sharps version, which that was a, a Sharps version, really, uh, is the only one on the market now. This is the range of mints packs. Uh, these are some rough, what we call design roughs of, for a jar label of glitter fruits. They were a clear boiled sweet, very hard, very fruity. I did a number of, these are all the rough designs I did for them. Uh, and, you'll, and you'll see some of the roughs over there. Over there on the right, I have a display of stuff. No. These, uh, this is another range of ideas, graphic ideas for um, crystallized ginger, which we actually never went ahead with. Here is uh, our Christmas range. It's quite limited, really. Um, but some of them are special packs that we only did at Christmas. Um, and then this is some rough sketches for a promotion which, which was quite difficult. You, the idea was you send in so many wrappers and extra strong mints and they'd send you four cubes to assemble and they the cubes had a puzzle so then you had to um, crack the puzzle and um, there was a prize if you got the the answers right um, and this is, this is some more roughs for a potential um, marketing data Right, so my life at Treeball was very happy. My, I worked in the, uh, uh, the studio, that is, worked under the marketing director, and he was so busy managing his uh, product managers that he didn't really know what we were doing in the studio, um, but we did behave. Um, but we seemed to have a lot of uh, time out doing what? essential things like surveying the market and other packets and anyway time goes by and unfortunately um, <clears throat> in the late 60s no I'm not talking about it now in, in the in 1990s yeah so, um, Roundtree brought out a competitor a strong mint competitor which rather knocked our sales, three more sales. Um, 
So things has got financially not very good and tree was sold out to um, Cadbury's. End of job. So I, I went uh, freelance, I worked for several agencies in London. One of the brands I worked on was called um, Simfast. Does anyone know, remember Simfast? So I did a bit of work on that. Um, computers were coming into graphics, so that left me being rather an old-fashioned graphic designer, a bit high and dry, but um, I soldiers on, I took up paint. Well, I've been painting for a number of years, actually. Uh, and in one stage, early in, uh, in the 60s, I got two paintings in the Royal Academy. Um, anyway, so um, now I'm painting like mad, and I will be partaking in the Hastings Coastal Currents in and opening my studio in um, September. So please come along. So that's uh, extra strong.